All right, everyone, I am so excited for this. We have got Michael joining us today. We're going to talk about what he's been up to the last few years, his new project, Villa, or is it The Villa, isn't it? The Villa, yeah, yeah. The Villa, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's amazing. I've actually followed Michael for 11 years now. I first started listening to his music with my housemates at university back in 2000 and 10 and that's just incredible i cannot believe where the time has gone so if you haven't gone and checked out turning point by the villa yet it's absolutely incredible the riff the hooks and michael's clean vocals on there as well sound incredible so michael if you wouldn't mind giving us a little bit of backstory behind how the villa started forming and also the message behind turning point because i understand for a lot of people dealing with depression or anxiety, there's a real positive message in there for them. Yeah, um, so uh, so it kind of came together. So uh, in my previous band, um, right, I actually, right before, I was in a brief project called Wild Heart, very, very briefly. Um, uh, that kind of like uh, fell apart. Um, and uh, two of the guys that were in that with me, um, and Kevin's also, were, were Kevin and Turner, um, Kevin, which was also in Woe's Me. Um, so, um, so yeah, so basically like we were, did the wild heart thing very briefly that kind of like fell apart, had a, had some, some problems there, but like it is what it is. Um, uh, I was playing drums in that project and basically I guess like Michael and Turner were like, yo, I know you love playing drums. And, and the reason why I wanted to play drums in, um, wild heart was just to like do something different um because drums were like my first instrument I, I grew up playing them and um it, uh, i wanted to just do something different i was kind of i kind of had like a bad taste in my mouth um with like the metal scene and all that stuff so i was like you know i want to do a completely different genre and i'm gonna play drums in this so um so i did but like um after the wild heart thing fell apart i was playing drums in that um michael and turner kind of were like yo um I know you like drums. I know you love drums and everything. Um, but you should, you should be a front man. Uh, I feel like you're just meant to be a front man. So I was like, okay, all right, all right, all right. I'm going to suck it up and, and do it. So, so that's kind of how the villa started. Um, we ended up like getting Michael involved. Um, uh, or sorry. Uh, so Kevin and Turner were in wild heart just to make that clear. Sorry. I, I was kind of confusing. Um, so it was Kevin and Turner that were in wild heart. Um, we ended up recruiting Michael. Um, into the villa and Michael kind of like had like kind of like the back bone or like the back story behind the whole villa like he kind of like pitched the idea behind it and everything and I was like yo that's sick and then him and I just kind of like fed off of each other and um and yeah um Michael and I go tour together uh we did a tour together uh when I was in issues so um Michael uh, everybody in the villa we've all known each other for years uh, we just kept in close contact everything so um so yeah that's kind of how that came to be we did um some songs uh we put out two songs um uh as as, as uh, you mentioned and everything so uh, we have two singles it, those came out like a year it's been like a year now so it's kind of crazy like um and so basically what happened was um we put out those two singles and then we went into the studio we went back into the studio with uh kyle odell and we did three more songs and then we started pitching our stuff to labels and everything and um we got management and um so the reason why it's taken so long basically to put out more material is because we we got signed um, so, and then when we got signed, we had to go back into the studio. So, um, that's why there's been kind of a delay. It's taken like an entire year to put out more materials because we were going to put out more songs, but we ended up getting signed. And so now we, um, we, it's pretty much kind of like a waiting game. So, but the songs are done, the, the EP's done. So, so the, so the, the record label is Velocity Records, isn't it? Um, they, yeah. They said, we want to put out the songs on this date, but here, go record it. And yeah, that's that's really amazing. And you got the management as well. Um, going back to Wild Heart, am I correct in assuming that it was because the lead singer left and then that was just the, because I was listening to them as well. Um, so I, I assume. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, basically, uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of an unfortunate situation. Um, basically, the singer went solo. Um, there's some very, uh, I won't go into detail, but there's some very uh, shady shit that went on um, with that. And it's it's just very unfortunate. It sucks. Kind of got fucked over, but it is what it is. Like, it's in the past. Um, but now he's he's a solo artist. He's doing his own thing. And it is what it is. It, it kind of. It's tough to see sometimes, but you just gotta you gotta bite the bullet and just move on. Yeah, of course. I I, I mean, yeah, I understand. I think he's a solo artist now, and he obviously took an opportunity, and that probably might have let you left you all a little bit high and dry. But it's actually worked out for the best. I I loved what you were doing with Wild Heart, and everyone else did. But uh, and seeing you on the drums was cool. You know, everyone who's following you and is a fan of your music will watching the wild heart music videos no doubt but the song going back to the new song turning point particularly yeah. um i mean i listen to that at the gym i listen to that when i'm running that's such an incredible song and to hear your vocal range as well we we've heard you sing clean vocals before but your range on that song is particularly in that chorus and the fact that the chorus is oh, yeah yeah so meaningful and you're hitting that high note um i hit the turning point you know like i can't i, I can't hit those notes and i've had some yeah it's up there it's up there um when i was uh when i was I, I literally was just sitting there so we had wrote uh kind of the backstory on that song like or instrumental wise was like so it was written they wrote the song uh kevin and turner pretty much wrote the instrumentals for the song. And I was just sitting there listening to it on repeat, just like trying to come up with a hook, trying to come up with something. And I was just sitting on my couch one day and I was just had my headphones in. And I was just like, na, 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 na. it just kind of came to me. And then, and then I, um, I, I literally went and pitched the idea and I was like, I hope I can hit this. I was like, I hope I can hit this. And then like, <laughs> we ended up recording. And I was like, okay, okay, okay. I think we're good, we're good. So, um, but yeah, I had that melody stuck in my head and I was just like, God, I, I I really like this melody a lot. So I'm, I'm just like, I hope when I go when I go when, like time to record it. I'm like, I hope I can hit that note. <laughs> but it, it came together, and then I was able to pull it off. So um, so yeah, I I I I, I thought that hook was really catchy, and, and it kind of stuck with me for days. And I like sat on it for like a few days before I was like, okay, yeah, 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 let's. Ooh, that's the one. We're gonna go with that. That's incredible. It's such a good hook. And the opening riff as well, which, you know, Kevin, who you've worked with before, obviously, he was very responsible for the woe is me sound as well. He's yeah. a very, very talented musician. He seems like a very down to earth, hardworking and just naturally talented guy as well. So that really yeah, shone through. Back. He's a, uh, he's, he's 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 a cool dude. He's he yeah. Him and I have got, been friends for forever, and um, yeah, he's just he's just very laid back, very chill. Um, he's he's easy to work with, but absolutely. yeah, yeah, absolutely. He does seem like a very relaxed guy as well, which is really cool. And I want to say, um, you again, you don't have to comment on this, but the it's so ironic that rumor has it that you know the one of the reasons that you are dismissed from issues was trouble with your vocals but then you come out with this song where you're both doing yeah. clean and clean vocals and that you know that your vocals in issues were great and your issue vo vo vocals in woe is me were great but it's i can't help but notice that a it's ironic that issues would never ever ever have existed without you like issues never would have started had you and ben and corey not quit woe is me and it it's ironic now that you have this voice, which almost is like you came out your shell and your voice is just incredible. It sounds great. Well, like, um, yeah, to be, to actually speak on that. Um, I really appreciate the, the kind words. Um, but, uh, but to speak on that, like, so basically what it was, um, when I was going to start singing in issues, I never had sang before, um, other than kind of messing around, like around the house around like practice or whatever like just kind of messing around just like like singing here and there like tyler kind of heard it i guess and was kind of like hey you, uh, you might be able to sing like like we might be able to like use that so and my confidence was at a zero 
was at a zero for singing because I've, I've never done it before. If, I, if somebody handed you a trumpet and go, hey, I think you could probably play trumpet. You should get in there and try to play trumpet. Like, you know, you're starting from ground zero. You're starting from like nothing because it's absolutely nothing like screaming. Like it's completely different Um, the way from, from everything, the, your technique, the way you use your vocal cords is all, it's just completely different. Um, So I had no idea what the hell I was doing, but like he had heard me sing. And, and so we, we recorded with Eric Ron. Um, we did all our vocals with Eric Ron, who's, who's absolutely great, by the way. Um, love that guy. Um, he's done some really cool stuff. Um, gotta, gotta give him some credit. He's, he's, he's absolutely awesome. And he actually, so basically what happened, pushed me to do it um which is fine because i want i was i was i was open to uh to branching out and, and trying to learn something new i was open with that um and so they got me in the studio maybe do this like we might do it on like a couple songs or so well i pretty much went in come time to record headspace i found out that i was going to be singing on like every single song Mm -hmm. And so this is something I had never done before. I had no really clue as to what I was doing other than like Tyler and like Eric Ron kind of like showing me stuff and like kind of like, like if I was like off on a note, he would, they, you know, they would kind of like coach it and, and Eric would go, Hey, it's here, not here, blah, blah, blah. Like, and, and so, which was, which was awesome. But like I'm going in and recording an album and doing vocals or singing on like 12 tracks that, and I've never sang before. So of course I have no idea what I'm doing. Um, so we come out of the studio and, you know, they kind of like asked me, they pulled me to the side, they went, hey, are you gonna be able to pull this off kind of thing? Which was kind of intimidating to be honest. Like it was a little, I was kind of like, yo, like, like, yeah, like, like I wanna definitely be able to do this. Obviously like we, we just recorded, and this is like, kind of like, like right as the, right towards the end of the album being done or whatever but like um i was like yeah 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 and so um w admittedly when i first started when, uh, that first tour i was nervous as shit like like i had no idea what i was doing still like, like i had just recorded an album started singing it's literally like somebody handing you a guitar and go hey record 12 songs with like this playing guitar and you've never played guitar before so i was like okay but you know, I was up for the challenge. I was honestly kind of put in a weird spot. Um, to be honest, it was kind of like, like you know, like I said, just like somebody telling you like to to do something and you've never done it before. And then um, so and then being expected to sound perfect live, you know. So the first couple tours we did, admittedly, I probably didn't sound that great. I thought you did. So, I saw, I saw you. I mean, I, I I didn't I didn't crash and burn by any means, you know. But like I, I probably didn't sound that great because that it was the first time performing live, singing live, and it was something I had no idea about. Um, I had never had lessons, nothing. Like, um, so so anyways, um, so uh, so yeah. So after that, um, we got a I got in uh I got a vocal coach, which is Mama Jan. Um, she's done like. Mm -hmm. some big some big artists um justin bieber she's done um usher matchbox 20 florida georgia line um some, some really big artists and i was so stoked um so i ended up getting vocal lessons um from her and just like doing it the proper way you know uh, which is something i probably should have done before we recorded the album but it was kind of like i was just kind of like thrown in there and go they were, they were like hey go sing yeah they wanted so, to change their sound as well and like you were yeah you weren't just singing on that album you were sort of half rapping half singing bit of screaming here and there and yeah and it's like while i was up for the challenge at the same time i was kind of like just thrown in there and going and going hey go sing and i'm like I, I, okay i'll try but um so basically we got the i got the vocal coach mama jana worked with her um and i progressed and and i i still wasn't where when I when I left issues like I still wasn't where I wanted to be um but I had grown so much like just within like a year year and a half like you know that that's gonna take time you're not gonna like think about people that are just insane at their instruments it takes you years to develop that you know to develop that skill and everything and I feel like I, they just kind of like were like hey you're not where we want you to be 
fight, we're going to let you go kind of thing, you know? And it's like, okay, I kind of get that. But like, but at the same time, it's like, I'm, I had only been singing for like a year, like, yeah. and, and like no proper training or anything like that. But like, um, so yeah, like, so they ended up letting me go. Um, I guess, I mean, now I've heard like 20 different reasons as to why, <laughs> but so <laughs> the story's in different times, but like, um, that's besides the point, but like, um, but now once I was out of that and once I started the bill, I was like, yo, I can actually fucking do this. And I'm not, I'm, this is going to be like my baby. This is going to be like my project and I'm going to, I'm going to sing and I'm going to do like, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I basically kind of like got my confidence back a little bit because when I was in issues, I was, I was constantly just like sweating. Like I was constantly just like, yo, am I going to fuck up? Am I going to like, I just felt like on edge the entire time. But like, but with this, like, this is going to be my project. This is going to be my baby. Like I'm going to, you know, like I'm, I know, I, I know I can do this. And, and I was like, I'm going to come out like swinging, you know, I'm going to come out and go, yo, I can't fucking do this. I can't sing. So yeah, you certainly can. I, I like I said, I saw you on that tour in the UK. I think I saw you at a couple of festivals, and it sounded amazing. But speaking of tour, we will get into a little bit of Europe. Um, I just want to mention you said you've got management now, and I do understand that in Europe we're still a bit high and dry. But I understand that in Florida and is it also Georgia, maybe South Carolina, they're starting to open venues up now and do outside festivals, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're start. It's cool. They're, they're starting to announce like things. Um, things are starting to open now, but like obviously tours that are getting announced might not happen till like the fall. I think once, like there might be like some shows, like some one-off shows being played here and there. But as far as like touring, um, I think it'll be like you know like September, October when it's going to be like full-blown tours, Sweet. which is really cool. Which is really cool to see. That's so exciting. Yeah, I can imagine that in maybe August and September, you know, you get those local festivals and you get those small sort of showcase festivals, kind of similar to Slam Dunk Festival in England. Yeah. And like almost those like miniature versions of Warp Tour. Like it's the same size as Warp Tour, but it doesn't tour. It just is in one place. Like yeah. it may be yeah. an opportunity. I, Cause I mean, I'm really gunning to see a good old, you know, iPhone filmed video of you playing live. That's going to be, <laughs> that's going to yeah. be exciting. <laughs> What's your... I, uh, I can't wait to play again. It's been years, man. I haven't even stepped foot on a stage actually since my last tour and issues. So it's been years. It's been, it's been a minute since I've even stepped on a stage. So yeah, it's, it's, yeah. I know once that first show happens, I'm just going to be like, oh my God, like, it's going to feel good, you know. It's going to be uh, amazing. And, yeah, I've, um, I'm really, really excited to see live music make a comeback. I've seen that in Florida and places, bands like Newfound Glory have been doing sort of socially distanced shows and Shinedown did one. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, or, or everything in UK and Europe has more or less been cancelled ap apart from a few sort of 5,000 to 10,000 capacity shows uh but yeah let's go yeah. uh, let's move on to that then so you've um because I, I i actually my other job is a personal trainer that's my day job personal trainer okay. fitness and uh filming commercials and stuff and one thing that i really like to talk about on my channel is the tour life what it's like on tour you know because a lot of people mm -hmm. they get burnt out a lot of people quit bands they end their career just because they can't stand the tour it's really one it's it's people get out there and they go it's gonna be one big party i'm gonna be chilling i'm not gonna be doing shit like i'm gonna just gonna have people do everything for me blah blah, blah. no nah, it it absolutely kicks your ass and and like and and people get out there and they'll be like a weekend and 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 after like the first week they're like nope this is not for me i think it's gonna be like this I think so and i think that's why a lot of bands uh disband as well because some of them they have jobs back home. Some of them are real estate developers, graphic designers, tattoo artists, etc. They go out on tour and a lot of bands actually, people don't realize this. They think it's some like rock and roll Motley Crue lifestyle. A lot of bands admit that they're operating at a loss because if you're, if you're paying $800 for tickets to the UK and then tour buses and food, etc. And 
then you're, yeah. playing, you're playing a venue which is maximum capacity 800 people, like you're looking at operating at a loss. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, um, depending on the tour package um, and what venues you play or uh, who you're playing with, um, yeah, you're, you're pretty much going to, you're pretty much going to break even. There's so many factors that go into touring in general, but like much less like an overseas tour. Um, you obviously have your flights, you have to pay for all your bags, your luggage to ship your, your gear. Mm. Um, thing. Um, there's so many expenses and, and even like, you, you know, with production, like people think that like, you know, you like a lot of people don't, know this but like you know obviously you have to pay for your production like any lighting any stage setup any gear you have like like that comes out of your your actual budget yeah. so like like there's so much that, that factor in but like um there might be some tours that like you're gonna have a loss but like you know we would we would at least try to like break even um when we went over um depending on the tour you know there were there were tours that we did overseas that we were definitely comfortable on but like but um you know, at the end of the day, like, like you, you might, you might end up just like breaking even. Um, but, but that's what you got to do to like get your name out there. You know, like if you get an opportunity, like we were in the middle of a, like we, for instance, we were in the middle of a headliner here in the States and we got offered to play Wembley with, um, with bring me. Yeah. And, and that was literally in the middle of a tour. So in the middle of our headliner, we flew out of Texas to go play Wembley for one day and flew right back. Wow. And so, and so we pretty much, you know, like we, we, we did it because we wanted that experience. You know, we wanted to, to, to have that experience and, you know, it was a once in a lifetime opportunity. So why not? But, you know, like, like we're like, fuck it. And when, so we paused the tour, the headliner for a day to literally go do that. And, and, you know, like, like we had to fly out and go do that for one day. And, um, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's so much that goes into it. There's so many, so many expenses and everything that 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 are involved that people just don't realize uh, that yeah, you got to pay. And it's really it's really hard work as as well. The way I look at it is that most people who live in cities like London or New York, they work a job so that they can pay rent and buy food. So if you're going to do something you love, like perform in front of people and you've got enough money to cover your food and your tour bus or your hotel or your Airbnb or your accommodation or wherever you end up, then it can be in, you know, it can be worth it in, in the long run. And then like you said, yeah. it, sometimes you get to play a festival and sometimes you get to play uh, the underworld in Camden, you know? Yeah. So, <laughs> so yeah, that plays all too well. <laughs> yeah there's the the underworld the o2 academy in islington uh the shepherd's bush empire london is my favorite place in the world tell me that, that i heard coco do you know coco yeah i heard they caught on fire yeah something like that happened a while ago i think so the, when it's not they're not usually doing the live shows they also do like cabaret stuff there so uh, I, can, I, I can imagine some either a live show or cabaret they had some pyrotechnics or something but yeah, yeah. I, uh, i've been i've been to great gigs at coco in, in camden i used to actually work in an office around the corner from it as well so that's a uh, yeah um do you have any funny stories from traveling in europe and the uk have you ever been to prague by the way as well that's a funny city dude um so the first time i went to uh, i'll be honest the first time i went to the uk uh, or I guess like uh, like London or like England specifically. Um, I was like, this is pretty cool. This is really cool. Um, but it's actually not too much different from the U.S. Mm -hmm. in, in a sense that like, yo, this feels like a completely different world because there's a lot of places in the U.K. that look similar to the U.S. It's just much older there. There's just much, way more historic like buildings um, in the U.K. So. I went over there and I was like, this is cool. This is cool. You know, I thought it was, it was cool, but, um, it was, it was a neat, it was definitely like a neat experience. Like the first time I went, but, um, I was like, it's kind of similar to the U S it's just much older. But now when I went to Prague, <laughs> that city blew me away. That is such a cool city. It's, it's one of my top, it's, it's definitely, people ask me like, what are my, where are my favorite places I've been? And, I, and Prague's always up there. Like it's such a cool 
beautiful city. It's amazing. I live in basically right outside of Prague now. So that's why I asked. And we had the word alive come through a little while ago. And, but yeah, we don't get many gigs here. We might get like the offspring or kiss like once a year. Um, but uh, yeah, that's pretty badass that you came to Prague. Cause I, 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 I yeah, expect... we with, uh, with good Charlotte and state champs. There we go. Yes, I remember that tour. And I think that tour also played at, was it, uh, it, it was in London at the Hammersmith Apollo or somewhere else? Maybe. I can't remember off the top of my head. Wow. But um, yeah, we, uh, but yeah, that was a really cool tour. That was a fun tour. But yeah, when I went to Prague, I was like, this city looks so cool. Like, wow. Like there's everywhere I turned, like, I was just like, wow. Like in, you know, even like the, uh, obviously it's like a big tourist attraction, but like, even like the, you know, the clock and everything, but like, yeah. like just watching that, like, it's just so cool. Like looking, um, I have so many pictures on my phone from like Prague and everything. Like it's just such a cool city. Like it really was, I don't know. It just kind of blew me away. But, um, um, I'm trying to think of like any cool stories or like funny stories. I don't know. Um, I don't know if I have any specific ones off the top of my head. I mean, every day is like, and every tour over there is different. So, yeah. but um, I remember one, or I, I remember one time we were stopped in, it's not even like that, that cool or anything <laughs> like that. But like we were, um, we had just played Amsterdam and the traffic was standstill. Oh my God. Um, we were like, after the show, the traffic was staying, so we couldn't get out of the city. Like, so we were parked on the side of the road, and we got out of the car because we were, had just been sitting, like, standstill on the highway, like for like an hour. And I was like, "What the hell is going on?" So we got out on this. We got out. We saw other people like getting out. So we got out of our van, and it was just a line of people just smoking, like <laughs> on the side. So everybody was. So we just got out and we just started smoking, like, like we just, yeah. So and we had bought some stuff so in amsterdam so it was just funny to see like for for like miles just cars stopped and just people getting out on the side of the road and just like smoking right like and i was like okay well this will pass time but um i don't know i don't really have like any like any crazy stories or like weird <laughs> stories we were i mean we like to have fun but we were pretty behaved when we went like to different countries just because we weren't trying to get like deported or anything like that we didn't want to get we wanted to keep our reputation up we wanted to be able to still travel because like there's some bands you know they go through they go through customs mm -hmm. and you know they get a lot of shit because <laughs> they might have a record or something you know like it is what it is but like um but you know like we just wanted it to be as smooth as possible and i think we were we we still had fun we like to do stuff we did we probably did some stupid shit but um we you know we, we were pretty well behaved when we went over to other countries and stuff. I've noticed you always have been in really good shape as well. It seems to be that like you quite focused on your health and your fitness. Um, was that, cause I know me personally, when it, I sometimes have to travel abroad to film commercials and stuff, like I've done a commercial in Bali and all of this stuff. And yeah. um, it's still a non-negotiable for me, even though the call sheet will be like working 10 o'clock until seven o'clock, I'll still get up early and get that workout in, get that walk in, eat healthy. Um, it's one thing that probably culture shocked you a little bit in London is probably how expensive it is. But then again, in Prague, it's dirt cheap. So was it, yeah. was it always easy to stay in shape and eat healthy? Oh, dude, no, uh, absolutely <laughs> not. I'll, I'll admit it firsthand. Like, like uh, whenever I went over to uh, like a different country, I'm, I'm kind of a picky eater as well. And to be honest, like I have like – been going to the gym a lot been getting myself you know in shape and um because i kind of let myself go for a little bit but um i was like i gotta i gotta i gotta i gotta fix this but i've definitely been going to the gym um a lot more and like making sure like you know i'm, I'm in good shape but um as far as like eating habits like whenever we would tour like it was it was kind of bad but um i'm pretty picky like uh, I just don't eat seafood. Like, that's my main thing is, like, I can't do seafood. Like, that's not my – I just – I, I don't like it. And a lot of countries or a lot of cities we would play would be, like, on the coast or something or, like, you know, especially, like, um, especially over, like, in Asia and everything. Like, like, like all – they love seafood. And so I'm over here. I don't – do you know what Outback Steakhouse is? Yeah, I do. I do. So, 
but so this is a funny story so every time we would go to japan i knew where every outback steakhouse was and i was like you can count at the outback steakhouse <laughs> like, like that's how every so i because they love seafood and like i would try different things but like um as far as eating habits i just like kind of stuck to like what i knew um i know that sounds terrible um but like i just kind of stuck to what i knew and what i liked um but yeah it, it was it but i will say in the uk the kfc over there infinitely better than america just infinitely it i is. don't know why it is it, I, I agree i've had kfc in america and it it tastes like salty it's bad. yeah i'm it's not really bad and so I don't even eat KFC over here. I don't even eat it. Like, but in the UK, like we were over there and I think it might've just been like the only thing open. And so I was like, all right, I'm going to get it. So I got it. And I was like, wow, this is just way better. <laughs> but there's a lot of things like, like y'all, like even with like food and like nutrition and like health codes and stuff, like y'all, y'all have like stricter like regulations and stuff. And like, I feel like y'all have, or like just way more healthy than <laughs> in America. Like it's, 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 it's kind of, bad oh yeah i when i'm in america i i sometimes because you get we get chipotle in london so i get chipotle in london oh, yeah. then i get chipotle in florida or new york or wherever i am and it tastes 10 times spicier to the point where i can't actually finish it it's like spicier and it's saltier it's so salty um yeah so i i love it though i i'm not complaining <laughs> yeah yeah it's 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 funny um but yeah, I don't know. I'm kind of, it, it's definitely hard um, to eat healthier, especially when you're starting out as a band. Now, like towards the end of issues, we were doing a lot better. Like we were, we were able to, able to eat like better things and, and eat a lot healthier things. And a lot of times eating healthier is going to be a little more expensive. <laughs> yeah. So it was pricey, but um, starting out in bands, like you're just, you just, it's so hard to even eat, eat well at all. Like, um, like just you're, you're, you're you know you're just gonna get the 10 piece nuggets from from mcdonald's you know like um but once you get once you start getting some revenue in and, and like you're you, you get successful and everything you, we definitely ate started eating a lot better um we weren't eating uh mcdonald's or, or taco bell every day but yeah 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 i um i understand that when i was in uh miami um that's not a very cheap city but um what uh, i would do to try and save myself some money is I would go to either Publix or Whole Foods Market uh, and I would usually just get like the big packets of tofu, which is already cooked, and then like some cucumbers, yeah. cucumbers, bananas, tofu, peanut butter, rice cakes, things like that. It actually works out cheaper than McDonald's, but it just gets so boring eating yeah. rice cakes and hummus all the time. <laughs> yeah, oh my God, that's, that's cool that you know Publix. I love Publix. Oh my God, so I good. love Publix. <laughs> it's so good uh did you ever get a sub a sub from there yeah sub i sub? love the, i love the pub sub so my, my family used to own a villa in Kissimmee, and uh oh. yeah so we used to go out there every christmas and easter so i i i basically know orlando like the back of my hand like i could probably be an oh, uber, awesome. i could probably be an uber driver in orlando because if someone said take me <laughs> to this place i could like know where it is good got it <laughs> yeah um that's awesome man yeah it's so it's been really really good talking to you so i'm really excited to hear some tour dates get announced and some live shows uh and that's actually the i'm gonna leave you on one last question what's your view yeah. on people in the audience filming people or oh, fans with their phone because this is controversial man yeah um i don't mind it so much like on certain parts, like I get there's, see, I don't know. I'm kind of indifferent. I'm on the fence about it. Um, there's certain parts of the show that are going to be cool that are, you're going to want to capture. You're going to go, oh, that was so sick. Like, like when a when a big epic moment happens, I get wanting to capture that. But if you're the entire duration of the show just filming, I'm just like, man, you're missing so much. You're actually like you're. you're I mean. If, if you have your phone out the entire duration of the show, just like, come on, man. Like, what are you doing there? You know, like, what are you doing? Like I get certain parts going, okay, this part's going to be epic. Or like, if you, if there's like a build up or something. You're like certain parts that get filming, but yeah, the entire duration of the show, like you're just up, your camera's up. I'm like, cause you're not, cause you're 
looking at your phone, you're not looking at it through your eyes. Yeah. Like yeah. you're looking at your, you're looking at your phone, making sure like you got the cool shot. Like I'm like, yo, you're going to miss so much. You're just missing so much that's happening. But um, I don't mind it on like certain parts, but yeah, like I said, the entire duration of the show, it's like, come on now. Right. Yeah, absolutely. I completely agree. Like if it's like, uh, say for example, a band's doing like a 10 year anniversary and it's the one time that they're going to play this song live and you just want to take a quick clip to send to your girlfriend, yeah. or whatever. That's well, I, more- I, I, well, I get it when they like walk out when they're like walking out, like their intro starts and you're like, Oh, I want to see their walkout. You know, like, like I want to film the walkout. Like I get that. Like, you know, like, like for, for epic moments, like I get it. But yeah, if you just are sitting there the, the whole time they're playing, like the entire hour and a half they're on stage. I'm like, Oh my God. Like, yeah. but yeah. it is what it is. <laughs> it's the, it's the, it's the age that we, live in but uh yeah it's it's funny i've been at shows before and i've seen people holding up phones like this and someone who has a five dollar beer 10 feet behind them will waste five dollars worth of beer just throwing it <laughs> oh at, yeah at the phone. it's so funny yeah, uh, yeah you're just like holding your arms up and like people behind you can't see and all stuff it's just <laughs> it's ridiculous. and then somebody's gonna go stage dive and knock your phone out of your hand and yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know. Well, I really appreciate this so much. It's been so fun. I'm so happy for you, and I'm so happy to see you and Kevin creating these amazing songs. And I really, really appreciate you hopping on this call with me. Thank you so much. Of course. Well. Yeah, I appreciate you having me, man. Um, yeah, we can. Well, let's uh, let's keep in touch and everything. Um, and, and if I'm ever over there, we'll have to. Uh, We'll have to get a drink or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. If you're ever in Prague or London, I'll be sure to to come hang out with you. Awesome! I can't wait to see you overseas soon. Definitely, man. Definitely. Hopefully, sooner than later. <laughs> Thanks, Michael. I'll speak to you soon. Bye for now. All right. Take it easy, man.